Hello YouTubers. Today I'm going to be doing a venison roast since it's a cold November day up in the Wago Grant area and we're experiencing our first cumulative snowfall. So I thought this is a perfect Sunday to have myself or fix myself a nice warm comforting meal for tonight. I'm going to start out, of course I've got a venison roast, I've got assorted mixed vegetables, I've got my AP seasoning which is salt, pepper, garlic, some beef bouillon, fresh garlic which I'm going to be crushing, I've got some French onion soup, also I have some uh, extra virgin olive oil, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce and fresh ground pepper. I'll be combin you know, combining all these items together. I'll be searing the roast and then it's going to go into a crock pot. Now I'm not going to go through all the steps, but one of them is I'm going to slice up a whole onion because basically you just can't have too much onion in any kind of a recipe. I love these onions whether they're fried, included in the recipe, or even raw. Just love onions. There's something about the flavor it adds to any dish. And with venison, I think it's extra important. Now a little backstory. I didn't shoot this deer. Actually I got it from my son who of course my daughter-in-law and my grandkids are not all that fond of venison and my son really doesn't care for any kind of a roast. So of course when he offered it I snatched it up and honestly I'm not that big of a venison fan but this is something that I would actually love to try and everybody I've talked to who uh, does this on a regular basis especially up here in uh, northern lower Michigan where hunting is quite uh, plentiful especially for deer I could get a lot of advice and most of that comes from a lot of my friends up at the Sportsman's VFW here in Nuevo. So I think I'm just going to start out with a half an onion I've got some more in with my fresh vegetables. So then we'll go on to the next step. Now the clip that I had that uh, showed me putting on the salt, pepper, and garlic rub on the roast as well as uh, uh, putting a little oil in the cast iron skillet uh, got the story or didn't come out quite right. So uh, I'm just going to kind of talk over it and uh, put a picture in the middle. Now, as you can see, this has been pretty well seared up on all sides. You can see the nice little crust of my seasoning. And so this is ready to go into the crock pot. Before I do that, I've got a couple other little steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this out and I'm going to put it on a paper plate so it can rest for another minute or so before I put it into the pot along with the veggies. Now my veggies, I have to admit, I got most of them in a bag up at the local grocery store. Rather than buy a whole bunch of carrots and celery. I just got a bag where I had a nice amount of uh, 
what I wanted to use or what would uh, best uh, flavor the rolls without having a lot of leftover uh, vegetables that I may or may not use. So for the just simple convenience of conserv you know, conserving, I decide just to get a small bag of them. And that seems to be enough for me. It did, did come with red skin potatoes. So of course I've rinsed off all my veggies. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of quarter these up. Don't have to. It's, I think they will soften up enough while they're in the uh, crock pot. But it's just my own personal preference. Just as an FYI, I'm using Dexter knives, which I ordered online from Malcolm Reed of How to Barbecue Right. And I got these knives because they're so sharp, they hold their edge, and they're easy to sharpen up when needed. So I've actually got a, another friend of mine up at the VFW post who makes knives and so he's making me up a nice uh, butcher knife that I'm going to be using you know in future videos as well as uh, the rest of my cooking. I'm going to put these in with my other veggies and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crush up some French uh, garlic because you can't have too much garlic actually I said crushed but I tend to like to uh, slice them up a little bit more and my personal preference this garlic is a major food group. Anyway, you can have, just like onions, you can't have too much garlic. Cut the bad pieces in there and get those out of the way. But I've never really had too much garlic in any of my dishes. I've had too much salt but I've never had too much garlic or pepper or onion. There's a couple of these little hairs, or not hairs, but pieces of skin. So that's already add. Now my next step is going to be I'm adding the, the roast and the ingredients into my crock pot. I like to use a liner because it makes cleanup a lot easier. And for an old DeVore single guy, it's great, you know, to make things easy when you clean up. And I'm a little bit anal that way, I kind of clean up as I go. First thing I'll probably do, I'm going to do, is I'm just going to take and throw a couple of veggies on the bottom just for the roast or to rest on. Not all that necessary but I really think it does a good job as far as giving it like a little cushion so it doesn't burn while resting on the you know on the bottom of the pan. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to take my venison roast and I'm going to go ahead and put it inside the crock pot. Another thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be saving the broth that goes in there. My next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the veggies. I've got all my veggies in here. I've got some French onion soup 
I'm going to sprinkle that on top. Now anything you want to do, you just go right ahead and go for it. This is all to my liking. Then I'm going to scrape in or push in my garlic slices. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I've got two cups of boiling water. You can use beef broth. In fact, I had some. But when my last wife left, she took the beef broth, evidently. Whether she did or not, I don't know. And frankly, I don't care. But by stirring in a couple of cubes of beef bouillon, this is going to give me a nice base. And it will eventually turn into a substance that I can make a nice gravy to go over the top of my potatoes and my roast. So, uh, and it adds that little extra flavor. You can get venison broth, but what I happen to have is just the beef bouillon cubes. In fact, any of your seasonings or your vegetables, whatever you're comfortable with. The whole thing is, is I want to make sure that my venison is moist and tender. And when with venison, because there's such a low fat content, you probably hear some banging in the background. Uh, that's my puppy, Gracie, who I named after George Burns and Gracie Allen. Gracie happens to be my favorite book. But anyway, I digress. Um, any vegetables that you use is perfectly fine. And any uh, uh, spices, the same thing. You just add it to your liking. And I don't use any kind of a recipe. Again, the important thing for me is that everything is nice and moist and uh, tender. Some, some people also add bacon grease. I'm not really, I got some. But I think this is going to be enough. Maybe on the next one I might add bacon grease to it. So, but in the meantime, I think I'm going to be just about ready. So, these recipes are good whether you're a single or you're a couple only or if you're a family. It's just a matter of, you know, increasing the capacities or, you know, the size of the roast or the amount of the veggies. And then a crock pot makes it very easy clean up and puts everything into one dish. And for those of you, especially the ones that have subscribed to my channel for the uh, features on camping and travel, this is a great thing to have when you're traveling and whether you're going to stay in a spot for a day or two or a week or whatever but you don't need to take a lot of things with you uh, to make such a nice meal so, now this is all pretty much dissolved so I'm going to go ahead and pour the contents into the bowl or into the pot and I'm just simply going to spread it around and just let it soak on through And that's going to bring it up probably to about a third capacity of the crock pot. After that, I'm just going to simply put the top on. And I'm going to set it. for high to um, my intention is to cook it for probably about six to eight hours but high will do it for four 
and with that uh, it'll give it a good start. I'll check it for tenderness and, te and temperature a little bit later and then get on greasy and then what I'll do is probably kick the heat down low and just let it set and simmer and eventually put it on warm until I'm ready to eat. I did forget two other little steps now that I look. See you gotta have margin for error. I forgot to add a little soy sauce. Again, no measurements, just to sprinkle, sprinkle some on. The soy kind of gives it that salty teriyaki taste. And then the Worcestershire adds possibly a little bite to it. And uh, it also gives it that little extra beef flavor. Again, as you can see, I didn't put a lot in there. I just kind of sprinkled it on. Um, generously and liberally or whatever you want to say. And uh, called it good. Now we're set and we're going to cook. So I'll be checking back in a little later after it's been in there for a couple of hours. I forgot to mention that I included the sliced garlic when I added the onion soup to the mix. Okay, it's been about uh, two hours, so let's take a look at this thing and see how it's doing. Okay, smells very good. veggies down into the juice and I can smell the wishes here so it's really quite strong. That's alright. Looks like it's doing well. A little check of the temperature. Not too bad, it's about 138 939 degrees. So it's moving on quite well, nicely. Still a little stiff or tough towards the bottom a little bit, so we want to let that go for quite a while longer. It's, this has only been two hours, so I'm going to let that go for at least another two more hours. And I'll take a look at it and check on it a little bit later. Until then, we be back. Well, it's been a couple more hours yet. Things are going pretty good. A little uh, temperature check. Well, I'm up to about 168 degrees. It's getting nice and tender. And really, with something like this, the longer it's in there, the more tender it is. So, starting to smell real good. The bottom's a little higher at 172, but it feels like veggies are starting to loosen up a little bit. But it's doing quite well. We've got it set at six hours, so we're just going to let her keep cooking. Back on. And we're all set. We'll let her cook for a while. Well, it's been in there for several hours now, so I think it's time to take her out. Pull the top off. Let's give it a probe. And right now we're right around 200 degrees and it feels nice and tender. I'm going to flip it over here a little bit. Check the other side. 
I had knocked it down to simmer. Yeah, we're still right at 200, nice and tender. So we're going to take this out. I'm going to put this on a plate and let her rest. Then I'm going to get some of the veggies out. Those are all nice and tender. I could probably add a little bit of cornstarch to that. See if I can thicken that up a little bit and make a little gravy out of it. There's not a lot of oil in here because the venison is so lean. I have a lot of veggies here. This is going to make a nice fall dinner, Sunday dinner. set that aside. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this open or cut the strings off this. Set here a little bit. This looks like it's going to be very good. I've already tried a little bit of veggies and I can definitely tell it's very tasty. Let's see what happens here. I'll start to pull this apart. Oh yeah, look at that. There's no need to slice this up. Look how easy this pulls apart. That is some good lean venison roast. Very tender. Now, I think what I'm going to do is we're lacking on cornstarch. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some au jus. Okay. Take a little bit of this au jus. I'll just go put some of this inside of a bowl. And we're going to put that right on top of our meat and veggies. And we're about ready for dinner. Start. Now that's the finished product. We've got some nice cooked, well cooked veggies. Very good. A little celery and, and carrots. That's good as well. And try a piece of this roast. That is very good. It's got a very smooth velvety taste not gamey and I'm not a big fan of venison 
but I actually like this better than a roast. It's got a very, very good taste. Got a little salt to it, not too much. Plenty juicy with the lao jiu on it. I didn't have the starch to make the gravy and I think it's better without. That is one good meal. So, I hope you enjoyed this little look at make, fixing a venison roast in the crock pot. Ideal for one or two people. Of course you can increase the, the quantity. Do a couple of roasts and you've got enough for a family. But if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And most of all, thanks for watching.